Kentucky. Well, more controversy this week surrounding the practice of fracking. The U.S. Department of Agriculture has dropped the plan to require an extensive environmental review before handing mortgages to people that plan to use that land for oil and gas drilling. Now, this has outraged opponents of hydraulic fracturing who say it eases up rules on the drilling method. They believe the practices come with extremely harmful health and environmental risks. So another debate over energy rages on in America. And to talk more about this, I'm joined now by Greg Pallast. He's an investigative journalist and author of the book, Vulture's Picnic in Pursuit of Petroleum Pigs, Power Pirates, and High Finance Carnivores. It's set to be out in bookstores on November 14th. Welcome there. Um, so first of all, I want to ask you, what is fracking and what is so dangerous about it? Well, fracking is uh, a brand new way of getting gas and oil only out really in real use for about a decade or so. Uh, it, it, what we, they do is they drill down, then they go horizontal through shale deposits, which normally you couldn't get gas out of, except then they uh, use an explosive and blow uh, through an explosion, they blow sand through the pipe, uh, zillions of holes, and then they dump chemicals and high pressure waters that cracks, fractures the rock around the pipe. When that pipe, uh, when all that rock is fractured, then the gas, little gas bubbles within that rock start pouring through into the pipe and up the pipe. Now, sounds good because this has now increased uh, the amount of natural gas that we can uh, pull out of American, uh, the American soil by a good 500 percent. I mean, we've just quintupled the amount of natural gas supply in the United States easily. But what's the problem? The answer is it can kill you. It can poison you uh, two ways. Number one, um, the fracturing process, it could just use CO2 and sand and water. But these characters who are doing it like Halliburton have been filling these holes with mystery chemicals, everything from diesel fuel, every type of toxin you can imagine, anything that would help them fracture that rock or that they think might help them fracture that rock. When the gas comes up, all that poison sucks back up and they've got to get rid of it. And often it's just dumped in, in ponds, uh, uh, dumps, wherever. So you have a tremendous amount of utterly poisonous toxic residue. And the second thing is you're fracturing rock. If it fractures all the way up into a water aquifer, now you're drinking this stuff. And But really what might be, and lately is discovered, might be the most dangerous part of it is the drilling itself, the, the drilling down vertically. You have to put cement around every drill casing. They have to be um, encased in cement. Otherwise, gas comes up around it. It poisons the aquifer as it goes all the way up. So if there are aquifers, that aquifers, by the way, are your drinking water, your underground drinking water. If, it, if, that, if those poisons get into the underground drinking water, forget it. We've seen this all over America now. This is happening. And these wells can then explode. The cement jobs are being done on the cheap. There are thousands and thousands and thousands of wells being dug. There are nearly a half million oil and gas wells in America, and they're drilling so fast that they're not properly cementing these wells and not letting the cement Now, Greg, dry. I want to show you because um, one of our correspondents headed over to Pennsylvania and um, look at what happens when they lit, I guess they lit the water on fire and this is tap water. Let's take a look at uh, what happens in this town. It got so bad that Ely and his cousin, who lives down the street, decided to find out what would happen if they lit their water on fire. A lot of like a flame were coming out um, when Mike was here. How big were the flames? Like kind of like that high, I think. I mean, that's pretty shocking right there. How does that happen where somebody's tap water becomes flammable all of a sudden? And what are the health consequences of being exposed to water like that? Well, two things. How it happens is that for the most part, it looks like the well casings, the cement jobs are done poorly. It's just like the deep water horizon. That's what happened. Deep water horizon is that the cement that is supposed to plug the uh, the, the drill, uh, the the borehole, gave out. The cement's all supposed to be around these pipes so it doesn't leak. And obviously, we had a leak here into an aquifer. What's really dangerous about it, besides it <laughs> explosive drinking water, um, is that if if there is gas in that drinking water, 
almost certainly you're going to have all that toxic crap that they put into these fracking wells, diesel oil, and, and we literally don't even know the toxins that they're putting in because Halliburton's made a big point of keeping these, it's so-called secret formula, um, you know, a, a proprietary secret, even though it's going into your water supply. And That's it, the problem. It, I mean, yeah. just by the looks of it, it looks pretty dangerous. I mean, I wouldn't want to drink water that you can catch on fire. Um, but at the same time right now, the USDA is going back on their plan requiring this environmental review. Uh, do you find this troubling? Yeah, because, see, the review is about mortgages. The Agriculture Department for Farms, and we have FHA and, and, and other government agencies which guarantee uh, home mortgages. If you have homes where you have fracking under those homes, these fracking lines can run eight miles under, under houses. And those houses uh, end up contaminated. The, the land becomes poisoned. The water systems are destroyed. Those homes are worthless. Then the U.S. government is on the hook, or those people um, are in real trouble because they think that they've allowed something safe. They may get five bucks a month in royalties, but now their home's worthless. Uh, we have to find out. I mean, it's just like having a termite inspection. They're literally saying, uh, we're not going to look. You know, if there's no problem, what's the danger in looking? They don't want to look because they're afraid of what they're going to see, except that means that the U.S. taxpayers on the hook, if there's a disaster and, and uh, half a million houses become worthless, and of course homeowners are going to lose everything. Now, Greg, energy is becoming is a hot button topic today, um, especially during campaign season, and many are blaming President Obama for the high gas prices. You know, they're saying he's not drilling enough, but it shows that statistics show that the more Dr more drilling doesn't necessarily mean lower gas prices. Now, how could it? I mean, gas prices are set by the world market, including the world monopolies, the oil companies, OPEC. Maybe these people who are saying drill, baby, drill have never heard of Saudi Arabia and OPEC. Saudi Arabia only produces 7 million barrels of oil a day. If the United States, by some absolute miracle, increased production by a million barrels a day, the Saudis would just knock it down by uh, their production by a million barrels, and there'd be zero effect on gas. It's up to OPEC. It's up to the international oil markets. It's up to the big oil companies. We could drill ourselves to oblivion and have fracking and, and the XL pipeline and move every polar bear out of Alaska. But that will not change the price of gasoline by three cents. It's nuts to even talk that way. Now, despite all this, Greg, there are some proponents to fracking. People say it creates jobs, allows um, to drill for our own natural gas, and in turn makes us more competitive. It can give us an edge over China. Um, and we have some examples. Of, here are some, some of the arguments for why people support it. We did sign on, and we're not sorry that we did. Susquehanna County is kind of a poor county, so uh, a lot of people did get work, and they got jobs, uh, and they're making money. So to me, that's a plus. So what do you make of that argument, Greg? Um, these here are folks in Pennsylvania who say they've benefited by fracking in their town. Per se, there's nothing wrong with oil and gas drilling, but you have to remember the argument, well, this creates jobs. That's true of nuclear waste dumps. That's true of the coal mines. When you, when you look at Susquehanna, why is it so poor? They had coal mines there, and the coal mines devastated their environment, devastated their economy, and for a while, it was living high. People got high, good-paying jobs at the coal mines. Now they're going, it's kind of like coal mine part two. Uh, haven't they learned anything? I mean, that basically resource extraction has never been a long-term solution for any community or any nation. It's All right, Greg, if drilling curse. isn't the answer, what is? Well, you know, sustainable, sustainable energy operations like solar, wind, etc. It's not tree-hugging, greeny stuff. It's how China's economy is zooming ahead of the U.S. economy. They're deep committed into production that keeps going, not just extracting until the land is depleted and poisoned. We have to have sustain, it's, when we're talking about sustainable energy, we're talking about sustainable industry, sustainable jobs. That's very different than saying, well, let's suck out all the stuff under my house or under my farm for a while, and then we go bust, and then it's all poisoned. 
That's not an industry. That's not an economy. That's resource extraction. It's a disaster. What we need is is new energy industry. It's just nuts to let China take over that industry while we are just putting holes in the ground and hoping that our water doesn't blow up. All right, Greg. Thank you for coming on the show and weighing in. That was Greg Palast, investigative journalist and author of the book Vulture's Picnic and Pursuit of Petroleum Pigs, Power Pirates and High Finance Carnivores. And it is coming to a bookstore near you on November 14th.